here, we most likely will be in a very quiet environment. So, um, <coughs> alright. So, before starting, uh, I would like to give uh, some words from uh, our director of research of our university, which is Pontificia Universidad Católica de Valparaiso, which are, of course, I mean, somehow also sponsoring that we are doing this. So, please, Fernando. So we, we, we found 
both areas. And also, we, have a, we are a complex university we, 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 we have all the areas of the knowledge that we have to find. Our uh, funding in the university from our researcher comes from extramural and intramural. And we have a very strong program for, for that in our university. So we encourage undergrad students and graduate students to participate. I think that sometimes we, the information is not the best for all the people to know where our instruments are because we have a very complex uh, uh, intramural uh, uh, program. We have more than 26 instruments to uh, give money to undergrads, graduate students and researchers um, to be involved in research, innovation, entrepreneurship and innovation of business. Anything, anything, anything that you want, please talk to me. We are very close as a university to our researchers. We encourage that if it's necessary, I can talk to people, uh, do some meetings uh, and see what is going to happen So, in the, in the next year or for the next two, three or four years. We, we know that what we do today in research probably is going to result but we're going to see the results in two, three, or five years, you know. So we we visualize uh, research and the innovation as something that is slow, but something that has to be done. So my last words are: It's incredible you're here. I hope you're going to not only um, learn something, also I hope that you, I'm pretty sure that you're also. We are going to enjoy this meeting. Uh, whatever you need, please contact me. I or when through you know stay out. Uh, please enjoy this meeting and contact me if you need anything. Thank you very much. I forgot something. I need to take off right now. So please uh, forgive me about that. Okay, uh, thank you Fernando for, for those words. Uh, so I will be the first to speak, but I will speak as, a, as a, one of the chairs. So it will basically be an overview of uh, what we're trying to do uh, during these three days. Uh, so first of all, I mean, for most of you, because you're already traveling, you should be aware of where we are again, in this uh, gigantic place here. So that, that's what, as Fernando said, uh, there's people coming from the US, uh, from Europe, uh, from Japan, uh, from Colombia, from Uruguay, and of course locally in Chile as well. So uh, it's been fantastic. We wanted to get people from Chile, but that's, that, that was hard. Uh, anyway, uh, so of course we are here in the very deep of uh, the continent. Uh, that's why, I mean, somehow we are, we used to feel very isolated in the past because, you know, we are surrounded, you know, covered by these uh, gigantic Andes mountains, which is a uh, go up to 7,000 meters in elevation. So basically that protects us a lot also from humidity and moisture from the Atlantic Ocean from the very tropical places. And that, that makes you very, uh, as a particular uh, conditions uh, of weather and also seems to be colder than our neighbors. So that, that makes it, people also thinking that Chileans are also colder, you know, and are not as friendly. But that's not true. Of course, maybe, uh, with the last events, maybe people are thinking the opposite. But anyway, I, I will show you that that's not the case. Uh, anyhow, so basically, uh, whenever you arrive, you arrive to Santiago, which is our capital, which is really in the middle of this whole 4,000 kilometer stripe. <coughs> so basically, if you go to the north, you will find the driest desert in the world. And if you go a little bit towards the, the mountains over there, you will see what was called the Altiplano, which we share basically with Bolivia, or originally it was Bolivia uh, So you will start finding some volcanoes in the middle of the place. If you go to the south, you will start seeing volcanoes again. So we have volcanoes all over the place, so <laughs> that makes us uh, sometimes a frightening place to live. But uh, hopefully, I mean, we haven't seen many eruptions lately, so that, that, that's good news. And, uh, of course, if you go to very near the tip here, to Punta Arenas, in Puerto Natales, then we have one of, one of these wonders of the 
not to award it just uh, towards the final. Uh, a magnificent place to go. Uh, although, I mean, it's very windy and it's very lucky if you're able to get this picture. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, if you go to the capital Santiago in a uh, more quiet times, you know, you will find that it's a very modern city, it's a mixture of 7 million people living there. Um, and of course we have this, uh, this is like the new crowd of Chile, you know, this 50 stories building, you know, uh, it's our Empire State uh, local home, you know. Um, so Santiago is a very crazy place to be, uh, as any big city in the world, I would say. Um, of course, I mean, uh, uh, because of all this, you know, the, the protection given by the Andes and of course the, the vast amount of uh, water that we are, uh, we are basically surrounded to the, to the left, to the Pacific Ocean, we have lo lots of things that are our, our, our main exports. So basically we have copper is our main income source. So mining is a very important activity for us. So then you have I mean, all sorts of agricultural things. So fruits and vegetables are exported all over the world. So most likely when you get an apple in the United States, it's a, a Chilean apple. Grapes as well. So of course, and coming from grapes, we have a very nice industry of wine. And this is one of our landmark wines that you will see all over the world, I would say. And they say they sell it in 190 countries. Of course, not at the same price we will find it here. So, uh, anyway, um, and, 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 and the reason for that is that, in, uh, at least in the central area, we have a particular set of conditions uh, for a very Mediterranean climate. So, it is basically very hard to get frozen conditions, which will kill uh, the, the grapevines. And, 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 and it's very steady, so the uh, humidity is, is very low. And uh, so they get lo lots of sun when, uh, during the growing process. And of course, we have lots of uh, wood. So the wood industry is a very large one, so paper industry. Uh, and of course, the other part, I mean, related to the ocean, is seafood. Uh, of course, we, we should be able to sample uh, through your stay here. And, um, and, and, and there's another kind of seafood, which is uh, the salmon. Uh, Factories, I would say, are really in, in this area here. But that's, of course, not, not a real natural resource. Yeah, it's really like an imported thing that is basically an industry. So I, I wouldn't recommend it too much salmon anyway. Um, but yeah, so, uh, and in terms of research, whatever we, we, we have to develop, we also are thinking about where we can do an impact in those particular areas. Of course, you would say, like in any developed country, you say, well, where is defense? So basically, our defense relies on buying stuff from abroad, like many of the, you know, not well-developed countries. So it's not within our major interest. And but I mean, we, everybody's interested. But of course, there's no, uh, they, they don't really put many attention to it. And and of course, you guys arrive. I mean, after a, a, hopefully a quick trip of uh, 90 minutes. Some of them maybe longer. Uh, just a little bit off the coast, I mean, uh, from Santiago, you get Valparaiso, which is a, well, it's a very old port, has lots of history, it's, it's been uh, all sorts of stories, I mean, from being uh, the place where wealthy people used to live, and then it was a very decadent place for several decades, and now uh, people have become to restore some of historic things and, and turn it into a very interesting thing and uh, um, touristic attraction that make them go, uh, um, called by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site to visit. Uh, and of course, with Valparaiso, we have our, our university, which Fernando just talked about here. So basically, it's not where, where, where I am professor there. So uh, basically, to, to just put into the numbers about talking about the, about the university, is that to basically uh, we are as, uh, uh, somehow uh, moderate-sized university in Chile. Uh, so we have basically an academic staff of 1,300, which is basically more, half of them are full-time. The rest is really um, partial-time. And we have around you know, 15,000 students you know, distributed uh, between undergraduate, postgraduate, doctoral students. I mean, to, uh, PhD uh, is somehow something new in our university. So 
programs maybe started maybe 20 years ago in some of the more hardcore science, like uh, physics and biology, you know, but we are really moving this towards engineering like thing. And of course, one of the strongest part of this university, they have encouraged lots of international student exchange. So we receive lots of uh, all sort of uh, gringos, as we say, uh, coming from Europe and uh, most likely from the USA. They come to learn Spanish, so the international programs are, are very well treated. And we also have lots of uh, exchange. Uh, we also try to send our students as much as we can outside. So our university was uh, founded in 1924, so it's kind of one of the oldest. I mean, no, no comparison to any of the European things, but. Uh, but yeah, it's a sort of a more than 90 years, and it's what, what is called one of the traditional universities in Chile. Today, uh, we are most likely ranked between four and five. We're always fighting with some other, but it's really hard to get to the third uh, place because the first three universities are very huge, so it's hard to compete from our perspective. Uh, anyway, we have, uh, uh, as Fernando mentioned, we have we cover most of uh, you know. Most of areas of knowledge, uh, the only thing that's mostly missing is that we don't have a med school. And that's what, what really jeopardizes our, our growth. So uh, we were thinking about how, how, how can we do that in the near term. And, and of course, it's something that's very peculiar of this university is uh, religious science. So we have a theology department because we are a Catholic institution. Anyway, uh, uh, we have a campus basically of right here that, that's distributed all over the city. And so, and, and agricultural science is in the middle of the real agriculture land, so they can really work on site, and, and there's a variety of things going on. But the good news is that basically we are uh, trying to be a decentralized thing in the sense that most of all the activities in Chile happens in Santiago, and that had forced all universities to have some campus in Santiago. <laughs> that, that's bizarre. But that's Anyway, uh, so we have lots of uh, international cooperation, and I think we have a sample here uh, in Europe, North America, Latin America, and Asia and Australia. Well, of course, they are far away, so it might be harder to, uh, to, to reach them out. Anyway, so and we have some double degree programs. I mean, they are growing every, every year, so that uh, basically our students can, can get uh, dual degrees with them. And, and that's one of the things I would like also to be like, uh, an advocate for, for, for trying to make this thing happen and you guys have any interest in, in trying to find some ways of collaboration for students that can reach that level of uh, dual degrees or any kind of uh, in undergraduate or graduate, I mean, be, be my guest. I think it would be very advanced tool for, for everyone. Um, uh, and the other thing, that, 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 as I've been mentioning, I mean, this university has started in research not a long, long time ago. And there's a steady growth of our, you know, research production, uh, so which is a very good sign that we are still in the, uh, we haven't, uh, we still have much to grow, and we are hiring lots of people right now. So that, that's something we are in, has been really a process of renovation and a change of mind. I mean, from the traditional lecturing to also be a full professor that also has research as like the, 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 the one of the. the most important duties. Anyway, talking about uh, maybe the scary things about Chile, uh, is that uh, we have earthquakes, um, just like in Japan or many other places, we are in the ring of fire. And of course, we had in the past 1960 a 9.5 magnitude earthquake in Bolivia, which is the south of Chile, and it's the, the, the largest recorded, at least in the, in the modern era. So don't be scared, that happens very often too frequently. <laughs> but in 2010, we had a major one as well. It was an 8.8 .8 with a tsunami. I mean, both had a huge tsunami. And uh, this was in near Concepcion, which is 500 kilometers to the south, where I used to study. So I was living there, but I'm alive, so uh, it's not too bad. But anyway, uh, the main mention of this is that uh, if, if we ever feel anything like a quake here, don't be scared. Be calm and quiet. I mean, this building most likely is uh, very old and has survived it, might have them, so it's way safer to stay calm and here, and we will find the best way to, to, 
I mean, running and getting out is not a safe <laughs> stuff. Okay? So, <laughs> if this stuff, look at this, you know, it's a life, uh, it, it will uh, shatter us. Okay, so that's the main message, but don't be scared. Uh, but we, lately, we also have a different kind of pet, which is the human pet. And that has been happening this last three or almost four weeks. So also, the same way as the earthquakes, don't be scared. Just be quiet and, you know, and try to just avoid the concentrations as we are happening today. So today was a very unlucky day in the sense that they are going for a, a, a national strike. They're trying to stop in the country and that's the, the thing they are trying to do uh, basically daily since the beginning of this process. So we think it will not be as bad as the beginning, so hopefully, again, stay calm and be quiet, really. I mean, there's lots of, of course, stuff happened, but there's lots also of media, trendy media, that try to also show stuff, I mean, way different and with a different perspective than reality. So I hope you, you can feel from your own perspective what, what's going on and, and, and create uh, uh, your own sensation. So anyway, the same message again. No, no hustle. So anyway, uh, just this reminder, we have the program for today. Basically, the most important things are in green. Uh, no. Anyway, I mean, the most important are our talks by our invited speakers and all our participants. Of course, uh, but uh, don't, don't forget about our lunch breaks and coffee breaks, and later we will have our, our welcome reception. Okay? And um, check the website, because I mean, we shouldn't have any updates, but uh, just in case. Anyway, uh, on Wednesday, just talking about the social program, we, we had planned to, to stop uh, earlier, so mid-afternoon. So you guys, uh, the guys that haven't come earlier, I mean, there's people like Professor Hustler that came on Saturday, so you guys have had plenty of time to know the place. But for you that don't, we, we will try to do either one of them. It will be basically a walking tour to Valparaiso, and if, it, if nothing strange is going on outside, we may take all the funiculars we can. It will be a very fun experience to ride them. And of course, the, the other great option is to visit uh, Pablo Neruda's former house. He was a very crazy poet. So all these houses, I mean, he has three main houses, and this is one of them where he used to get inspiration for his love poems. So it's still an interesting place to go. So. Or we, we will find, I mean, talk to me, talk to any of you guys to see, I mean, if you, if you want to do any of those options or just want to walk by yourself or go to the hotel and have a drink, I mean, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, also in the social program tomorrow evening, we have a banquet at a restaurant that's called Portofino. I uh, will send you more information later. So, but I sent you a link where you have to choose your, uh, your dinner options, okay? So, do so. At, uh, your earliest confidence, but hopefully today, because I can send it so the guys are preparing the right stuff for us tomorrow. Anyway, uh, just in case, Wi-Fi here, in case you haven't had it written, this is your opportunity. You will find this being 399, which is basically the, the number of the street, and the, uh, the password. So it seems to be a very high speed one. So, so general information. <laughs> and Finally, oh, general chairs, in case you don't know me, I'm Esteban, mm -hmm. I'm from, from the Catholic de Valparaiso University, and uh, the other chair that has helped me a lot, and he's working on super resolution, that's why he gave me this <laughs> oh, resolution one. <laughs> Which is Pablo Mesa. Pablo, stand up a little bit so people know you. So Pablo Mesa is the other chair, so please uh, reach in. He comes from a uh, from the Universidad de la Frontera, which is in the south of Chile, and hopefully at some point we may be able to do a workshop over there and see other nat natural buildings that are surrounding. Okay, and of course our organizing committee, which is basically my team, so if you feel, see those guys I mean, and, and need anything, approach them, I mean, they, they will be happy to help you. And finally, well, uh, welcome to Valparaiso and enjoy your stay. Okay, thank you. So continuing with the program, uh, we have the, the honor to have the visit of uh, uh, Dr. Red Jeffries, which is a representative of the uh, Office of Naval Research in 
South America? Is that right? Yes. All right. So he will talk us a little bit for everyone uh, in, in the room uh, about funding opportunities that they, they, they used to handle for South Americans, and I guess also for collaboration with this. So Red.
So the first thing is the visiting science program. What this means is we want to make connections between you doing the good research and the researchers that are doing research in the U.S. for the U.S. Navy. And it could be researchers at the Naval Research Laboratory, or it could be even program officers. Uh, next slide, please. This is an example of what we did in fiscal year 18. Uh, as, as the number of grants that we had, I'll just highlight a few things. So this is the, the number, where these grants were done globally around the world, not U.S., all the other countries. So these countries here are referring to non-U.S. countries, right? From a global perspective, we focus on outside the U.S. And he, Jeff Anderson, was the co-sponsor for this workshop, did not come. But they are co-located there with us, as well as the Army, the uh, Combat Capability Development Command. They have America's uh, uh, division, which also does a similar thing. We all do about the same kinds of thing. We look for good research, basic research, is different and help make sure that what you're focusing on is of most interest to the 